Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Tim. Our lector is Jean Collison. Our servers are Noah Hewton and Abby Kirkhoff. We have the following announcement. Our dollar collection following communion will go toward cleaning of the church and the Gretemann Center. Thank you. We welcome parishioners and visitors to our parish mass. Please stand and greet those around you. Our processional song is number 310, Table of Plenty, number 310. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. God has delivered us into the midst of summer, but it's a beautiful day nonetheless with the heat and the humidity. So as we begin our Eucharist in preparation, may we just accept our Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd of Israel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the son of justice. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the prince of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the of the world. Uh 
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I raise up a righteous shoot to David as king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him. The Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are near, for through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When Jesus disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes I surprise myself by the questions I ask people. Late afternoon, yesterday, early evening, a couple of friends and myself were at a table and we were seated with another couple whom we didn't know and they introduced themselves and uh, they're in their mid-30s and, and they've been married about 16 years, they said, and then the, the wife said that their oldest child is 14 and they have one about to be a teenager and one not too far behind. And so I just thought to myself and I looked at them and I said, do you two consider yourselves to be old? And they looked at each other and then the husband turned and said, yes. And then I looked at my friends who were in their 70s and I thought about myself near 60 and I thought, well, what does that make us? <laughs> <laughs> um, most of us probably can share my own thoughts. Um, I lived in small rural areas in this part of Iowa for most of my life and have been um, placed in parishes that are relatively small. So I possibly don't understand fully when our gospel said these vast crowds, as Jesus saw, how vast and numerous they could be, how many people that may have been. And as I said earlier in the gospel, so many numbers of people coming and going. I don't know if I understand that, or I can grasp such a large number of people. But there was one experience 
that I had many years ago, I have not forgotten, that reminds me of vast numbers, people coming and going. It was one of my first times up at uh, Rochester, more specifically the Mayo Clinic hospitals. And I forget why I was there, but I think it was to visit somebody, a friend. And uh, I was totally clueless to where to be, and I got out at one of the places and went in, and, uh, and the person looked her up who I was visiting, and they said, well, you're a distance away, but just go down the stairs and take the tunnel. I had no idea a tunnel existed and what it may be, but I went downstairs and went into the tunnel, and my eyes were open. I'm sure they still have it. It's like a subsidy downstairs of so many people coming and going in various directions. Doctors and nurses, I could tell by what they were wearing, some in scrubs, some with lab coats. Businessmen and women in, in uh, their suit coats and dresses. Some who weren't dressed as formally. I'm sure they were family members or friends trying to find a place, the room they were to visit. Just numerous individuals, some moving slowly, most of them moving rather rapidly, coming and going. And I just looked around at all the humanity down there in this, what I would call a sub-city in this, in this tunnel. Some going to appointments, some going to surgeries, some going to on the job for the first time, others leaving their job, some going to visit a family member or friend, some going to meetings, numerous senses of concerns on their faces or something weighing in their hearts, I'm sure. Just a vast number of people coming and going. But I believe more and more, even though this is a rural area, and we may not have, quote, the vast numbers, but the coming and going is almost reflective of what I saw then. And uh, I'm certain of it because I see it on the faces of the people in our community here or in the other communities or places I may have been in this rural part of Iowa. You can see it on the faces. You can hear it in the hurriedness of people's voices or in the vehicles that are driving, at, especially at certain times of the day, the hurriedness, the concerns that they're carrying, the duties that they have to carry out, the responsibilities that they fulfill, appointments they're going to, or something simply weighing on their hearts. Probably no different than the people that I met that day and I witnessed coming and going in that tunnel at Mayo Clinic. Maybe a little less of the strain or burdens, possibly. But we find our society, whether rural or urban, very much like that. And I believe within all of the people coming and going that we are called to something greater. As Christian men and women, we are called to something greater. We may not have been given the gifts as Jesus gave the apostles that when they went out to cure, to expel demons, to teach with eloquence as they did, but we've still been given this one particular gift as Christian men and women. And oftentimes, at least in my life, I forget about it or I set it aside, but it's something noteworthy within our lives. And I think I was reminded of this just a couple of weeks ago when I was in a different hospital setting. I was in over in Omaha at the university hospitals. And I'll be the first to admit I get lost there very easily, though it's much smaller setting than the Mayo Clinics, but yet it is rather large and can be confusing. So I always park in the same area. It gives me a sense of bearings. And this time, two weeks ago, I went in, parked, went to the information desk, got the room I was supposed to visit. Started down the hallway, but not too far down the hallway, I looked at it again and I realized I had no clue where this room was at. It was an entirely different part of the hospital than I was used to. So I stopped. And there were people coming and going, most doctors and nurses by what they were wearing and some hospital employees going down the hallway. And I was looking up on the information signs on the walls, but still had no clue. And then there was an, a doctor, and I could tell that she was a doctor just by the lab coat that she was wearing. And she was coming or going somewhere, but she saw me, and she came over and she paused. And she asked in a voice, which was very gracious, I have not forgotten that. It wasn't a hurried voice, that she had to move quickly, or one of exasperation as I, amongst many others, needed help. 
But she saw me standing there and she paused and very graciously asked if she could help where I needed to be, what I was looking for. Showed her the card and she pointed in the direction of where I needed to go with a small smile on her face and she walked off. At that very moment, it just gave me this sense of peace. Maybe it was just momentary, but it just gave me a sense of peace and even a greater awareness of a presence within myself in that area. I pushed a button to the elevator and went up to the area where the room was at. I didn't forget her voice, her willingness to stop, her pause in that time. We are not the apostles, certainly, but we are Christian men and women that has been given a mission as messengers. We are not the message, we are the messengers. And as the gospel talked about, when Jesus saw the vast crowds and witnessed great numbers coming and going with concerns, hurriedness, as he said, like sheep lost without a shepherd, he knew that they needed something, as did his apostles. He knew that they needed a place of peace, however momentary it may be. A sense of awareness of a greater presence. We are given that within our lives. Yes, we have duties to carry out, responsibilities to fulfill. With the activities we have in our lives, we seem to be in a hurry. But we have been given the gift by our Christian faith to know of a greater presence. And as messengers of the message, we can in our daily lives, another day that we've been blessed with, we can pause. No matter what we have to fulfill, no matter what weighs heavily within our own hearts or burdens that we carry or responsibilities we have yet to fulfill, we can pause when we see somebody else, the face of another person, who have concerns, who is hurried, who maybe have burdens weighing heavily within their hearts. We may be the person, the messenger of peace for that individual just momentarily, with no exasperation within our voice, no hurriedness within our actions. And even if it's a moment to listen to that other person and pause to offer them the gift of peace, a greater awareness of some presence before and within themselves. It may seem so minute in our daily lives but as we find ourselves coming and going more and more frequently, regardless of the numbers, we too are called, in not a small way, but to be the messenger of God's peace, of a greater awareness of those individuals just seeking a small portion of the shepherd that hopefully we find within our own lives. As St. Paul said in our reading this, this evening, Christ is our peace, and we both, those coming and going, have access to one spirit. May we offer that with the gift of peace within our hearts. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the red Gathered this evening in our Lord's presence, let us bring forth these prayers today to the Good Shepherd. For the Holy Church throughout the world, which is known to be one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice in every land and peace among all nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this place we call home, Carol, may we always be thankful for the great blessings you have bestowed on it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live the consecrated life, may they always be fortified by our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Lawrence Sporlater, Justina Langle, Leroy and Patricia Sangroth, Chad Lenz, the living and deceased of the Lewis Pringer family, Emma Messersmith, Poor Souls, the living and deceased of the Norbert Halsing family, Peggy Stovall, the living and deceased of the George Herbert family, John A. Schrader, Jr., Charlotte Tegas, Louise Kennebec, Marvin Hulsing, Sister Mary Lourdes Langenfeld, Robert Huntsman, Orville Ludwig, Sue Ludwig, the living and deceased of the Kenneth Sieve family, Leona Balk, Steve Grayson, Owen, Anthony, Brad, and Timothy Martin. We pray to the Lord. O oh, shepherd of us all, you know us personally and what we need. In your mercy, we ask you to hear these, our prayers. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The song for the preparation of gifts is number 446, We Will Rise Again, number 446. Yeah. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifices and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may be benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. And through him the host of angels and the great company of saints adore your majesty. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, in the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our Bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, deacons, and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and her blessed spouse Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Warm summer day, may we bring our voices together and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With this beautiful afternoon, may we offer one another some sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Please join in singing number 332, Taste and See, number 332.
Shortly before Mass, we had our own Barney Fife who located our children's basket. So we're, thank you, Louise, for doing that. Well, you can come forward. Any children who have an offering for God, thank you. Spirit
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. This evening, joining us, we have some uh, visitors from out of town who, uh, Bob and Mark and your families, who returned to bury their mother and father at St. Mary's Cemetery, their home. And so, and you as a family, wherever you live, I hope, whenever you come back, you recognize uh, the Lord's presence, and you're always welcome at your parents' home. The Lord be with you. With this beautiful, hot summer day, may Almighty God bless each of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to serve and to love our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join in singing number 539, Let There Be Peace on Earth, number 539. 